Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Siddharth Jain, currently working as a pool officer in rheumatology at PGI Chandigarh. And I'm here today to dis discuss the results of our study, which identified predictors of response to methotrexate in rheumatoid arthritis and was presented at ULAR 2022 this year. So as we all know, methotrexate forms the first line preferred therapy for rheumatoid arthritis because of its effectiveness, safety, and low cost. However, only 60% patients respond to methotrexate. That is, out of 100 RA patients treated with methotrexate, 40 will not respond. And since there is no way to identify which of these patients will respond or not respond, all of these patients inadvertent, inadvertently receive a trial of methotrexate, the response assessment of which takes around four to six months before we can change our therapy. Time is key in rheumatoid arthritis. Earlier the treatment is in, uh, initiated, better are the outcomes in terms of long-term joint damage as well as the medical morbidity. Thus, if we had the liberty of predictors of treatment response at baseline, we would be able to uh, stratify our patients and decide which patients will respond to this therapy and which will not. And it will make our job easier, save around four to six months of trial and improve our patient outcomes. With this premise, we planned the present study. The study subjects were based on the MIRA RCT, which was a multi-centered trial comparing different dose escalation strategies of methotrexate, which was published last year in the Annals of Rheumatic Diseases. What we did was we took up all patients in this study because they had op received optimal doses of methotrexate for a good amount of time, that is at least 16 weeks. And at the end of the study, we collated all of them together and divided them into two groups. Those which got better on methotrexate, which we called as methotrexate responders, and those who did not get better, that is methotrexate non-responders. So out of a total of 178 patients in the trial, 113, that is 63% patients, were classified as methotrexate responders. So what was a crucial question for us was, are there things at baseline that can tell us whether a patient will respond to methotrexate in future or not? And as we can see, we tried a whole lot of parameters ranging from demographic like age, gender, the patient's BMI, presence of comorbidities, the disease activity, the disease duration, the functional limitation, and also the laboratory parameters which are usually tested in patients of RA, which include root blood factor, anti-CCP, ESR, CRP, and some cytokines. So we tried all of these parameters exhaustively to see if they could predict methotrexate response or not. And what we found out was that out of this whole long list of parameters, younger age, higher BMI, and rheumatoid factor negativity tended to be independently associated with a greater likelihood of response to methotrexate. When we tried to cross-check this analysis with other techniques to see if these uh, findings were being reproduced, we found out that age and rheumatoid factor were replicated. And we also found out that presence of greater number of swollen joints at the time of treatment initiation tended to portend a poor prognosis and reduce the chances of response to methotrexate. Thus, we concluded that a younger age, rheumatoid factor negativity, higher BMI, and lower number of swollen joint counts at the time of treatment initiation are potential predictors of response to methotrexate in patients of RA. However, as a word of caution, since rheumatoid arthritis is such a variable disease, and no single patient behaves like the other one. These findings need to be checked in other populations and in larger number of patients before these can be used clinically all across the country. Thank you.